Euro 2024 is just a little over three months away. And when you look at the squads involved, France are definite favourites and in fact the bookmakers have France and England tied in their odds to win. The only difference between the two is that France could also field a second squad that would probably be capable of at least reaching the semi-finals. France's immense depth has been talked about incessantly over the past few years, but what many people don't know is where this never-ending fountain of talent is located. If we look at France's footballing history on the national stage, the very early days seemed quite promising in terms of the amount of talent they could field. At the 1908 Summer Olympics, they had two teams, France A and France B, due to a little tiff between the USFSA, the French Football Union back in the day, and FIFA. Funnily enough, Denmark crushed both teams beating France B 9-0 in the quarters and France A 17-1 in the semis. Sadly for them, the next decades would not see their national team cover itself in glory. Up until the 1970s, all the major European nations had something to show for on the international stage. Italy had won two World Cups in 1934 and 38, albeit with some help from a certain portly dictator. A war ravaged Germany recovered to win a World Cup in less than 10 years after World War II ended. England won a World Cup on home soil with a totally legitimate goal in the final. And even Spain, who were considered perpetual underdogs, had picked up the 1964 Euros. France, however, despite having a vibrant footballing culture and one of the largest populations on the continent, were stuck dusting the spider webs of their empty trophy cabinet. Even though the national team was thoroughly underwhelming, the country was not without talent, as players like Just Fontaine and Raymond Coppa emerged as early as the 50s, and French clubs reaching the final of the European Cup three times up until the 70s. The man who sought to change this perceived inferiority was French Football Federation President Fernand Sastre, who started plans to create a bespoke academy in 1976. The man selected for this project was Stefan Kovac, the Romanian manager who was just coming off a two-year stint with the national team. Having previously managed Steaua Bucharest and winning two European Cups with the total football side of Ajax, Kovac was selected due to his ability to promote youth in his previous jobs. His main inspiration were the communist training centers from his native Romania, where he returned after laying the groundwork for the project. After France picked up their first major trophy, the 1984 European Championship, the site of Clairefontaine and Yvelines near Paris was selected. Many of the players of that 1984 side were first brought to the squad by Kovac, continuing his legacy and impact on French football. Four years later, the official unveiling and opening ceremony was held. Since then, the academy has produced the likes of Nicolas Anelka, Kylian Mbappé and Thierry Henry, and most of their graduates go on to become professional footballers even if they don't make the national team squad. The first win of the new academy was marked in 1998, when Thierry Henry won the World Cup on home soil. Sadly, Sastre did not see his dream bring a first World Cup title to his nation, as he sadly passed away just three days after the 98 tournament had started. Just two years later, Henri was joined by Anelka as France picked up their second Euros win. The academy is not limited to French players, as many African national team players have graduated as well as Rafael Guerreiro who stars for Portugal. The site itself is massive, stretching over 66,000 square meters with every conceivable facility imaginable present, from stadium pitches to tennis courts. The size of the site has also enabled it to host the French national team in their title winning campaign of 1998 and the 2016 Euros. This has been credited with improving squad cohesion and keeping them away from the prying eyes of the paparazzi, who can affect and disrupt the team's performances as seen with England's golden generation. At the center of the facility sits a 17th century chateau which is reserved for first team players of the national team and provides a sort of aspirational site for a lot of the youngsters. Players who are at least 13 years old are selected to attend Clairefontaine and stay and train at the facilities from Monday through Friday. Players are also required to meet educational criteria attending nearby schools and high schools in Rambouillet, with the bill being footed entirely by the French Federation. The main success factor of the French approach is training their players to work in every conceivable system, whereas Spanish academies focus on their tiki-taka style and the Germans prioritize team spirit and, and the gegenpressing style, Clairefontaine has no specific style. Their ethos is to train their players to work in every team they might find themselves in, therefore its main principles are off-the-ball movement, 
weaker foot training, technical skills, link-up play, and the psychological aspect. The sense of unity is also being fostered and promoted, especially with the young players spending so much time together. Didier Deschamps has spoken at length about the team spirit and the sense of unity of his 2018 World Cup winning side. And except maybe for Mbappe, you can't really point to any massive egos in the 2018 or 2022 side. Speaking of Mbappe, he is the current golden boy of Clairefontaine, leading his nation to victory exactly 20 years after Henri did the same. Others like Raphael Varane weren't discovered directly by Clairefontaine scouts but have spent some time in the national academy system. The Ile de France region, considered one of the most productive in terms of footballing talent, is completely covered under the jurisdiction of Clairefontaine. On a national level, there are 12 other academies, so that all regions of France, including Réunion and Guadeloupe, are covered. Despite being more than 35 years old, the national academy system is not showing any signs of fatigue, as any tour of Clairefontaine's facilities would show you what the cutting edge in football development looks like. Every aspect of the training and scouting is being digitally tracked, and the modern data analysis methods are employed at every level. In terms of player comfort, the clean and simple look of the facilities is paired with cinemas and activities like bike rides or ping pong. This is meant to minimize homesickness whilst also ensuring that all players start out in the academy on equal footing no matter what background they might have. As I have spoken of the England Golden Generation earlier, it would be interesting to see an alternate timeline where a sort of Clairefontaine spirit of unity had been embedded in that squad whilst also having a safe retreat far from the eyes of the press. The English FA certainly seemed to think those factors were lacking in the past as the French system was one of the biggest inspirations behind opening the St. George's Park National Training Center. More recently, Belgium, which lies but a stone throw away from Clairefontaine, alongside Turkey and the US, are also said to be taking inspiration from the success of the French model. This, alongside the two World Cup trophies won since, are arguably the biggest testament to Sastre's successful idea. The only thing that remains to be seen is whether or not the rest of the world can provide an answer to France's continuous rise. Thank you so much for staying on until the end. If you like the video and the content, consider liking and subscribing. You can post any ideas for future videos you have in the comments below and I hope to see you next time.